Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to uh, complete the rest of the drawings required for the steel frame. Just open up the assignment sheet. Okay, uh, so the remaining drawings we need to do are the cut sheet and the connection details. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly walk you through how to draw those elements. Uh, and then I'll also, uh, in this tutorial, uh, finish up uh, composing the page and adding all the, all the notes and uh, dimensions. So uh, in your Rhino file, um, basically what we want to do uh, with our cut sheet is kind of call out um, what all of the uh, individual types of parts are. Um, and uh, in this case, we're actually going to use the, uh, our exploded axonometric to kind of demonstrate um, uh, the different types of parts that are uh, forming our stool and kind of how they're arranged. Um, and so we can see from this drawing that there are actually only, you know, uh, basically two different parts. Uh, there's a, the horizontal member and the vertical member. Of course, the, all the horizontals are the same length. All the verticals are the same length, and they all have a cap uh, a cap on them. So what we want to do is just basically draw those two members um, and dimension them, so that we know uh, that we can use that uh, information to fabricate the individual parts that would form the stool. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the layer medium. So for the steel frame, this is really quite easy. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Uh, now my horizontals are all inset to the verticals in the frame, which means they're all 10 inches. So I would type in 10. And of course, the tube is one inch wide, so I would type in one. OK. And what I'm also going to ask you to do, so I'm also going to draw a construction line here. Uh, and I'm going to offset my construction line. Uh, also by one inch. So I'll just type in one. Okay. Because what we're going to do is draw this thing as an oblique. Uh, that way, um, uh, you know, we have a kind of three-dimensional view of what the part is. Um, so we can see not just like, you know, what the length of it is, but if there are any details on the ends and things like that. So I'm going to draw um, a couple of lines coming up from the elevation or the rectangle I just drew. I just type in line, snap to the corner, hold shift to snap to a certain angle. OK. And then I'll just connect those lines. Maybe lock the construction line. I could explode the rectangle. And just show the cap or the end of the horizontal. So that would be the horizontal member. I also want to draw the vertical member. For that, I'll just make a copy of this. And in order to um, uh, make it longer, I'll just draw myself uh, another line at 18 inches. Uh, and actually, what we want is for our line to be um, uh, 17 and 13 sixteenths because we have a 13 uh, I'm sorry we have a 3 sixteenths inch cap plate on the end so I could just scale 1D that line uh, let's see okay 17.8125 okay and then in order to move these, uh, or to, to edit this drawing to make it the correct length, I can just select all the curves, go over here to this button, or type in the command points on. So make sure you hit the points on and not the edit point on command. So points on, select uh, all the points that form the ends of these lines, as well as all the lines. I'm sorry. and hit move there we go so we just extended our drawing 
And then I would also draw here. I would just make a copy of those lines that are at the end. And show the 3 16 inch cap plate. Okay. Oops. Okay. So for the steel frame, this part of the drawing is actually really very simple. Uh, that's all we're going to do for now. And I'll show you how to dimension it later and everything. Uh, but the other thing that we need to do uh, is to draw the connection details. So if we go back onto the assignment sheet, scroll down to the steel page, uh, basically what you want to do is show these two details. Um, so in order to draw, um, uh, or in order to uh, demonstrate how the connections are actually made, where you know two, uh, two pieces come together or multiple pieces come together, we want to show a zoomed in uh, drawing of just those connections. And uh, in this case, we can basically just show two types of connections. One is how the vertical member joins to the horizontal, uh, which is just a welded connection. That's what those little beads are. And then the other connection joint uh, would be the uh, seat, how the seat joins to the uh, frame. So uh, coming back into my file, I could start by just drawing a rectangle. Uh, I'm just going to make it some length. Oops. Sorry, make it, I don't know, six inches by one inch. And then make this one one inch and just pull it down here. What we're going to do is we're going to actually cut off uh, um, the rest of the uh, uh, member in the image, uh, just like this. We'll use these little squiggly lines. Uh, and then I could come in here. I'm going to go ahead and select my vertical, explode, and offset this guy by 3 16 So that's my cap plate. Um, and uh, I need to draw my little welded connection. So the welded connection is going to actually be, uh, well, actually before I do that, I should draw uh, the thickness of my material. So um, because we're using 14 gauge steel, I could just do quickly uh, 14 search. So 14 gauge steel is 5 64ths. So I want to offset these lines by 5 64ths. I'll have to explode this one first. I could actually just delete that line. Okay. So that's the thickness of our part. I'm going to trim the excess up here. Okay, so we want to show uh, the thickness of all the individual elements as well in these drawings. And now, uh, the last thing to do is to draw the welded connection. Um, so uh, like it shows in the uh, detail drawing, we're going to have a welded connection uh, between the cap plate and the end of the upright, the vertical. And we're going to have a welded connection between uh, uh, the horizontal member and the vertical. So what I would do here is just draw a line from roughly the midpoint to roughly 45 degrees uh, um, at the line that uh, between the two uh, elements. And I could go ahead and make a copy of this by just mirroring it. Make sure it's set to copy. Mirror it across that line. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to show a little bead at the top uh, because when we weld it, uh, we'll probably have some material left uh, kind of above the face of the material or, or out, outside of the face of the material. So for that, I'll just draw an arc. I'll snap to the inside or the midpoint Draw an arc like that, select my arc, and scale 1B. 
and just kind of scale it down so it's not so huge. Okay, and then I could take those three lines, so I'll join them really quick. I also want to trim these lines. And I could also use this uh, um, uh, little symbol to indicate where my uh, welded connections are on the cap plate. So I'll just make a copy. Rotate it 90 degrees. And position that. I can trim the excess. And then I'll mirror it. Oops. Ah, because we already trimmed that. Uh, so I can just mirror it somewhere and then move it in. Okay, so now we have most of the line work in place. Um, at this point, uh, I would want to hatch. So uh, like we have on the assignment sheet, it's a good idea to hatch your materials in order to uh, you know indicate like what uh, types of materials are the difference between you know the wood and the steel for example so if we go on to the d2l site go to contents under the section resources there's a file uh, hatches.3dm so go ahead and download that file once you've downloaded it uh, you can go to uh, wherever you downloaded it and drag it in. So just drag that Rhino file into your Rhino file. And don't check open, make sure you hit import. Okay. And that will bring in all the hatch patterns that we need. And actually you can delete the concrete one, we won't use that. So once I've imported this file, uh, now these new hatch patterns are available in this file. So if I wanted to hatch these, oh, Actually, before I even hatch uh, this drawing, I want to make my little cutoff, my little squiggly lines. For that, I'm going to change to the layer dimension. Uh, and I'm going to draw, first of all, a vertical line somewhere. And then I can draw the little diagonal line. You can just eyeball this. Make a copy of it, rotate. Snap to the midpoint. Oops, make sure you have copy turned on. Okay, and then draw these lines out somewhere over there. Again, I could copy, rotate, or mirror this. Okay, and then I'll select all those lines and join them. And then I can use that to trim uh, the end of my vertical and my horizontal. So now we have all the line work in place. And now we could come in here and actually hatch, uh, hatch the drawing to show the materials. So I'm going to change onto my layer hatch, type in the command hatch. Select, uh, so first I want to turn this option boundary on. So make sure that says yes. Select all the curves, press enter. And then I want to go in here and click the individual areas where I want there to be a hatch pattern. So once I have them all selected, press enter. And for steel, we're going to use hatch two, which is like a double parallel line. I want to show it at 45 degrees rotation. And I might scale it down just a bit so that it reads better at that scale. And click OK. So that's the kind of standard hatch for steel, is a double parallel line. And uh, we also want to hatch our, uh, um, our little welded connections. So again, I can type in hatch, select all the lines that form the outlines of those, press enter. For this, I'll select hatch one, and I'm going to make it much smaller. 
so you can really see it at that scale. Okay. So that's our first detail drawn. And next we want to draw the other detail, the connection uh, to the seat. So for this one, I'm going to again start by drawing a rectangle, make sure I'm on the right layer. One inch by one inch. Um, and I also, again, want to show the thickness of this uh, material. So I could type in offset, 5 64ths. Offset it towards the inside, right, because the outside dimension is one inch. And I also want to fill it uh, because in reality, when you get this material, it will have like a curved outside edge rather than a really sharp outside edge. So I could type in the command fill it, which will allow me to select uh, two lines at a joint and it will create like a rounded corner there. So I'm going to start with a radius of, uh, let's say, 1 32nd maybe. And click on one line, click on the next line, and it'll make a little radius for us. I think I might actually want to make that bigger, so I'll undo, fill it, and try 1 16th. Okay, and then go 1, 2, and there we go. We have a little radius. I can press Enter just to repeat the command. Okay, so there's the frame. And the next part that I want to draw is the bolt. So if we look at the dimensions, we can see we have a one inch bolt here. We can see it's called out as a quarter 20 round head machine screw. And we can see that uh, uh, down here we're being asked also to include washers. So there's a washer between the steel frame and the seat, as well as between the, the head of the screw and the seat. So we need to figure out what the dimensions of these things are. So uh, if you go to the website mcmaster.com, uh, on this website we can find, uh, uh, like this is a, an online store for buying all kinds of tools and hardware and stuff like that. Uh, but what's great about it, and so from the front page I'll go to screws and bolts, I'll go to round head screws, Phillips round head screws, here we're just choosing a material so it doesn't matter. Okay, and uh, under the length, so the length we can choose one inch. Uh, under the uh, thread size up here, we can choose a quarter, 20. Okay, and it doesn't really matter which one of these we choose, but what I wanna do is go over here to this little uh, code, the part number click on that, and then click on this button product detail. So what's cool about this is that we can find kind of uh, dimensions for like almost any type of hardware. So I'm going to use this as the dimensions for my, uh, uh, my screw. And so I have a 0.492 uh, inch screw head. First, actually, I'll just draw a line. Uh, starting from the midpoint, one inch. Then I'll also draw a line. Uh, I'll choose both sides. And I can choose, it's about half an inch, I'll just round uh, it up to 0.5. So if I'm drawing a line to both in both sides, I can choose 0.25. And uh, then the depth of the head of my screw is 0.175. So I'll offset that, 0.175. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a couple of vertical lines up, something like that, because part of the top of the head is flat. Again, I'm going to draw an arc. And then I can scale 1D this arc down to my little measurement, which is where uh, I know the size of the head is. Okay, and then the uh, threaded part of the screw, I would just offset that. I know it's a quarter inch, so I could use an eighth of an inch. Hit the option for both sides. Delete the center line. 
Okay, so that's more or less our screw. Uh, and then I also need to find dimensions for the washers. So on the same website, I can just search washer. Go into washers, general purpose washers. And on inside diameter ID, I'm going to go down to uh, something that's sort of uh, just a little bit bigger than 0.25. Again, I could click on the part number and click on product detail. And then I can use those dimensions to draw uh, my washer. So first of all, I could draw my uh, washer at 0.688. And the thickness is between 0.03 and 0.055. So I'll draw a rectangle, choose the option center, snap to the midpoint, so 0.688, and we'll say 0.04 to be somewhere in between uh, the thickness variation. And then I could make another line at 0.265, so I could draw a line here offset it 0.265 divided by 2 in both directions and use that to trim my washer and because we're cutting through the middle of the bolt in this detail we're cutting right through the center of our connection we would just kind of see each edge of the washer like that so we just need these two sides Okay, now we can bring this guy down. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to draw the seat still. So the seat, the wood seat is going to be about uh, um, a half an inch in thickness. I could snap to the midpoint, just draw a rectangle, choose the option center, snap to the midpoint, and make it, uh, I don't know, three inches, maybe more than that. 4 inches wide and 0.5 inches in depth. Is that right? Okay. Okay. So I'll move this guy up a little bit and then I also am going to have a washer. So I'll make a copy of my washer. I'm going to have a washer in between the seat and the frame. So now I can bring my seat down and then I'll have a washer in between the seat and the head of the screw. Okay, and now I have my whole kind of assembly in place. I could also go over here and make a copy of uh, my little squiggly line by dragging it and tapping Alt. Then get that guy into position. Good mirror it. I'll use those to trim the seat. That looks good. I could bring the ends of my lines in just a little bit. Okay. And then I want to use my screw to trim uh, all the elements here. Because we're going to have a hole in the seat and we're going to have a threaded uh, uh, connection uh, with the steel frame. Okay, so now our drawing is in place here. I would go ahead and hatch it. I'm going to change the layer hatch. Type in hatch. Make sure boundary is set to yes. Select everything. First I could hatch the seat, the, the wood seat. So just click on those two spaces. Press enter. And once again we can go up to the hatch that's called wood. I think I want this to be 90 degrees, so it's horizontal. Maybe the scale, oops, actually I want it to be zero degrees. Okay, set the scale to one, click OK. So there's our wood seat. I would hatch the steel frame the same way I did on this drawing. Hatch, oops, make sure I select all the lines that form the outline of the thing I want to hatch. Uh, oh, I guess I do have one called steel here. 45 degrees, 
uh, and just to make sure that I'm using the same scale and everything, I could select that hatch pattern, click on match under properties under hatch, and then click on the steel hatch I used over here uh, just to match the properties. Okay. And I believe that is that drawing complete. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do next <coughs> in order to line weight that drawing is I actually want to go ahead and lay out a second page. So down at the bottom, I'm going to click on the little plus sign again and make a new layout. Again, 11 by 17, landscape. Uh, now the first thing I want to show on here is my uh, exploded axon. So with the detail window selected, I would change my scale to 3 inches equals a foot or 12 inches. Then I can double click inside the detail window and move it. Right click and drag to pan. Okay, so we'll have that drawing on one side of the page. Then I could select my detail window and copy it. And move around in there. I could show my cut sheet up at the top. Make another copy and then show my detail. Oops, where to go? Okay. So I also want my cut sheet to be at three inches equals a foot. So that one's good. And then I believe it says to show your details at half an inch equals an inch, which I think I found was a little too small. Yeah. So that that's what that would look like. Again, I could zoom. Type Z. Enter and then click on this button one to one to see it kind of at full scale. So that's how it would look. That's how it would be sized when I printed it out. So I kind of probably wanted to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make this one inch equals one inch. Okay. And then over in my model space, so if I go back to top view, I could kind of position these drawings so they're better arranged. I guess I should also make a copy. Go back to your first layout. Select your title block, type in copy, make sure you change the seat number, uh, so it looks like we need to move this over even more, okay, and we could kind of find some more space on this page if we need to. Of course, we could also trim uh, trim these details just a little bit more to give ourselves more room. Okay, uh, and then on the layout, I'm going to change uh, at the top left in the viewport, change to print preview. Okay, and uh, what I'm doing here is I want to use this uh, view to line weight my drawing. Uh, that way I know that uh, when I'm looking at really thin things like that, like the washer for example, uh, because those that's like two lines that are really close together, what I want to avoid is that looking like um, a single solid line, right? We want to make it clear that there's an object in there. So if I go back and kind of line weight all the things that I think should be uh, like section lines. Change them onto the layer heavy. Okay, let's see how that looks. So it still reads relatively well. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Um, and, oh, one last thing I forgot to do. So we could also hatch the screw. Uh, again, I would make sure I'm on hatch. And for this, I'm just going to use hatch one at like two degrees. Oops, I'm sorry and make it a really small scale, maybe not 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or something like that. Okay, just kind of show the thread. That way uh, we're representing that that's a screw and not some other piece of hardware. Okay, looks pretty good. What I may also do is actually make those uh, welded 
symbol's a little bit bigger because they're not really reading that well. So I can select the whole thing, type in scale, and I can just double click to use the scale factor I used before. So type in scale, snap to a point. So my the first object that I scaled, I just kind of eyeballed, but it remembers my scale factor, so I can just press enter on the rest of them to reproduce the same result. Okay, and then we could also just quickly rehatch the steel. Hatch two, 45 degrees, pattern scale of one. Click OK. Is that right, pattern scale one? Oh, pattern scale 0. 0.5, sorry. 0. 0.5, all right. So hopefully that reads a little bit better. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, so now we have all our drawings laid out. Uh, what I want to do now is kind of add, I'm going to turn off my construction lines. I want to add in uh, dimensions and callouts. So uh, in Rhino, there's a whole bunch of commands for dimensioning things. I'm going to make sure I'm on the layered dimension because uh, my dimensions also need to have like a line weight and a color, print color. So I can use the command dim, D-I-M, to dimension something. Uh, so if I were to start with my uh, plans and sections and elevations, all I need to do is snap to two points, and then Rhino will generate a, uh, a dimension for me. By default, this is how the dimensions look. Uh, so it's going to show our units kind of in decimals rather than with fractions. Uh, and it's going to, uh, it's not going to display any units, right? It's not saying that this is 15 inches or 15 feet or anything like that. So rather than use the default dimension style, so up here when I type in dim, there's an option annotation style. If I click on that, uh, what we want to do is actually load another annotation style, which is pretty easy. We just type in options, go to the very, very top, annotation styles and in here we'll go uh, new and under new there's a bunch of default ones that Rhino has loaded automatically we're going to use this one foot inch architectural click OK okay and now when I make a dimension so I type in DIM press enter under annotation style I can change to that style First thing that you'll notice is that it's huge, right? It's really big. So first of all, I want to point out, if I go to my uh, page where my actual drawing is, my layout, the dimension isn't huge, right? So dimensions have what's called a model space scale. And what I want to do is edit this dimension style so that it has uh, a model space scale that's not huge uh, when we look at it in model space. But just know that, you know, no matter what drawing it shows up as on our layouts. So, you know, like for example, on our detail drawing, which is a lot smaller scale, uh, it'll still uh, display the dimensions at the same size. Okay, so in order to edit this dimension style, I want to click on it, go to properties, go to linear dimension, click on the drop down, choose edit style. And in here, I'm just going to change this to 1. Model space scale, change it to 1. Click OK. OK. And so now it's just going to display exactly what it would display on the layout. So it's just a little bit easier to kind of see what's going on. So I would dimension my uh, frame in my plan. I could dimension my seat as well. And the idea with your dimensions, also you want to kind of make sure you're avoiding intersecting with other uh, information in your drawings. 
So you can edit dimensions after you've drawn them uh, by just selecting them and moving their control points. Um, let's see. But uh, in general, what I want to use these drawings for, this set of drawings, is a kind of general set of dimensions for this tool. And so what I want to avoid doing is kind of uh, repeating multiple dimensions, right? So those are two different projections. I'm just showing that the frame is the same size in both directions. I could dimension my seat up here. And I can also snap to existing dimensions to line them up like I did just there. Okay. And you basically want to avoid, uh, so like I said, I want to kind of show all of the general dimensions of this tool, the kind of overall dimensions um, on these drawings. And I want to avoid like putting every dimension on every drawing, right? I can use kind of all of them to show all the information. So I don't need to show dimensions that are redundant. Um, but I also want to avoid, okay, so we have a problem here. I also want to avoid like uh, putting uh, dimensions that are too small for these drawings. So for example, I didn't dimension the frame, which is something that I can, that I'm gonna do over here on my uh, detail drawings. So I don't need to do information that isn't um, sort of appropriate for this scale either. If I can just make my window a little bigger, there we go. Okay, so this page actually looks pretty good. And then over here on this page, so I would dimension these drawings as well. Uh, and the reason that we dimensioned, or I'm sorry, that we drew our cut sheet, uh, where we offset the depth of our kind of oblique angle to the same uh, dimension as the thickness of the material is so that we can do that. Um, so we want to be able to dimension this drawing and get the right proportions. So even though it's not like a <clears throat> correct 3D projection, um, we, can, we can draw it in such a way that the dimensions are correct. And then over here as well. Ah, so this is another important point. So I just dimensioned this uh, part of the drawing, which I know to be 3 16 And you can see that it's displaying as a quarter of an inch. The reason for that is that um, there are, there's sort of a, uh, display resolution to like dimension styles. So if I select this dimension, again go to properties, dimension, under style, and choose edit style. And if I go to length units, you can see right now the linear resolution is set to an eighth of an inch. So basically any dimension or any length that I dimension uh, will be rounded to the nearest eighth inch. Since I know that this part is 3 16 and I want to make sure I'm showing that, I'll just change that to a 16th of an inch. Click OK. And now it should display the correct dimension. Uh, let's see. So once again, I want to kind of try and make sure I'm lining stuff up as much as possible to make it a clean drawing set. And I believe that's all I need to show on these drawings. Okay. So just double check on your page. Again, you can see that uh, something got screwed up here. Um, now when the dimensions are too small, it'll actually display the information to the side. That's a setting uh, to the dimension style. But if we draw it, we redraw it, uh, we can see that as we're drawing it, we can choose which side we want it offset to. So just redraw that one so that it's clear. It's not overlapping an existing dimension. Okay, maybe redo this one as well. Uh, 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna dimension my details as well. Oops. So, like I said, on these drawings, this is the opportunity to show, you know, exactly what the thickness of things are, uh, exactly what the connection is between things. I would show this, the size of my screw. Okay. Looks pretty good. Let's check in on the layout. Okay. So we can also go in here and edit where the actual information is written. So if you select a dimension, you can select the point near the text and just kind of move it around, make sure it's not overlapping anything that's going to confuse it. Okay. So this looks pretty good. And then finally, we have to address the uh, axon. So I think I said this in a previous tutorial. Uh, this drawing is going to mainly be used to kind of show uh, what the different parts of the stool are, as well as uh, how they go together. So as we've already uh, um, demonstrated with our cut sheet, uh, there are really only two, or maybe three if you count the cap plate, there are really only two different types of part on this drawing. What I can do is, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what I want to use this drawing for is to uh, call out exactly where these parts happen on my drawing. So I could use the axonometric to kind of say, okay, this is part A, this is part B, um, and this is how they're kind of arranged. Um, and also I should point out that because we produced this drawing uh, from a 3D model, um, the dimensions actually aren't correct anyway, because it's a it's a axonometric angle. So if we were to measure this drawing, we wouldn't even get correct dimensions anyway. So we just want to use this drawing to kind of show what the parts are and how they're arranged. So there's two ways I can do that. I can make what's called a leader, which is also something that you're going to want to do for your uh, detail drawings in order to call out like what different materials are and what the parts are. So with a leader, if I type in leader, I can click somewhere. You can see it's forming a little arrowhead. Click somewhere else and create a line. I can enter some text or make a note. And then you can see what the leader does is it just uh, makes some text and then makes a little line with an arrow at the end. And that allows us to like make notes on our drawings and call things out. So if you look at these drawings, all these little notes and tags are, are what are called leaders. Um, now what I want to do actually is maybe show it in a different way, slightly different way. So instead of making leaders, because I might have a whole bunch all over the place, I'm actually going to make a text, um, just a little uh, block of text and uh, place it directly on the, um, on the drawing, on top of the drawing. So I'm doing this on my layout page, that's important. So I'm going to use the command text, not text object, that's important too. And then I could uh, type in A. Also in here I can set the height of the text. I think an eighth of an inch should be okay. Okay, and then I can place my text uh, in my drawing, or on top of my drawing. Now what I also want to do is uh, make a kind of circle around it um, so that I can, uh, or make a kind of, make it into a symbol basically. So I'm going to use the command circle, make sure my center O snap is turned on, snap to the center of my text object, and make a little circle like that. Okay. And finally what I want to do is hatch the circle. So I'll select the circle, type in hatch and I could fill it in, press enter. I want to choose the option solid. And then you can see it's making a black uh, solid hatch. Obviously because my uh, print color for this layer is black. So what I want to do is uh, select my hatch, 
go to properties, go to the object properties, so the little uh, rainbow wheel, and uh, change the print color to white. So when you set the print color, uh, or when you set the uh, set anything inside the properties panel, you're setting them specifically to an object. And whenever you give an object properties, it overrides whatever properties are assigned to it with the layer. So you can kind of um, uh, pick and choose if you want specific objects to have different properties. And then I'm going to select this uh, little tag, copy it around my drawing. And as much as possible, I want to kind of um, be consistent about where I place this tag. So rather than just moving around, you know, kind of aimlessly, I'm actually going to uh, snap to, oops, I meant to copy that. Snap to the uh, points in my drawing so that it's sort of arranged in a consistent way. I think often with this kind of drawing, you really want to use um, a lot of uh, consistency with how you do your layouts, how you do things like dimensions, how you add notes and labels, uh, because that's really going to help someone uh, understand the information a lot better, because they'll sort of like learn how to read the drawing. So then I could copy one for the horizontal as well. Then I'll just select my text object, go to properties, text button, Change it to B rather than A. Again, I could copy it using the control points. Make sure it's centered. Okay. And then I would also want to do the same up here. Okay. So just like that, we can lay out, uh, or we can kind of make a diagram of, you know, there's two different types of parts. There's an A and a B. And uh, this is how they're kind of arranged uh, in the assembly. So I would also at this point want to make a copy of this call out and place it next to my cut sheet. and line things up as much as possible. Okay, and that way we know that when we're looking at this cut sheet, okay, this is part B, that's how I fabricate part B. And if I look at my axon, I can see there's four part Bs, uh, and that's how they kind of go together. And the last thing I'm gonna leave you to do uh, will be to add uh, notes. Uh, so again, I would use the leader uh, command and add some notes to your uh, uh, detail drawings to kind of call out, you know, what the hardware is, you know, the difference between the frame and the seat, uh, what the materials are and all that stuff, what the connections are, it's a welded connection. Um, and then finally, what I want to do is I want to make labels. So again, I'm going to do this on my layout. I'm just going to use the command text and I want to go on here and I want to label all my drawings. Now I think it's also useful to like uh, uh, make the labels a different scale from like the dimensions and the notes and things like that just so we can develop a kind of hierarchy to the information that's on the page and, and make it a lot easier to read and sort of visually clear. So I could scale this guy up to uh, larger dimension and also on my layouts or I'm sorry on my labels I want to use this to call out uh, the scale of my drawings so I could say three inches equals one foot zero oops zero inches and I'll just go ahead and copy so I, 
it also looks like there's sort of these drawings feel a little bit close together. So I can just move those out of the way a bit. Okay, so we want to also make sure it's kind of clear uh, what label belongs to what drawing. And we can do this on the page too. copy of this text object. Again, you also want to be careful that you don't uh, uh, put any information too close to the edge of the page because it won't print out uh, when you go to print a hard copy. Again, use consistent uh, spacing. And remember to correctly label what uh, scale you drew this at. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to leave it to you guys to add, add the uh, callouts on your connection details. And I think that should just about do it for this uh, tutorial.